I think I just want everyone to get ice cream together. I do too, Dante! <laughs> God, huh. Something nice, something minty for you, son. So this is the second atrium that Catherine mentioned. It's the center of the heart. Once we get past here, huh? Quick, quick approached me. Your name, I know. They call you Dante. Yeah, that's my name. They call me Dante. Your words I cannot hear. Like whales voices, like mermaid voices. You bring back dead crew. Well, I guess that's all I do. But not just body death. Heart death, too. Heart? I couldn't help but be confused by what Queequeg said. Unless she's talking about the actual heart, I never had any power like that. No one ever told me that I did either. You don't make them lose way. Their way. Where they really want to go. You tell them with your clock sound. Dante. Something I wish. I want Ishmael to find her way. I mean, I stopped um, listening to um, the Divine Comedy for Dante's book specifically. Because I started to get what felt like hints to chapters. Like, there was a chapter, there was a mention of collecting tears. I'm just like, that screamed chapter 4 to me with K Corp. So I stopped purely for that because I didn't want to get spoiled on some of the, like, the larger lore bits. Because I imagine there's a lot from the Divine Comedy that is just branching through all the chapters. That's one that definitely sticks to my head, as well as um, Bus Greyhound, the guy being Virgil. And I know it's not Virgilis, but it's... Uh, Virgil's close enough? <laughs> so... But I remember when he, Dante is going through those chambers in the book, he's meeting people to carry their memories out. Almost. So I'm wondering if this is making those connections to bring the sinners out of where they're kind of trapped, in a way. By going through their past. I don't know. I don't know how well... They're given a decent amount of checkpoints. I still don't see any way to, like... Remix crew. Uh, going with the current. Keep going with the same until it stops working. Huh. We just need to get past that abnormality, then we can get to cutting the whale's arteries. Looks like we can cross that sinew-like bridge over there. Quickly suddenly steps in between us and the bridge. HW. Halfway? Is that what you're saying? I'm j I'm... What are you doing? The bridge. Made of flimsy veins. This way, original plan. <laughs> <laughs> She's speaking like quick quick. <laughs> this looks like the way, but no, not the way. Once one person crosses, bridge snaps under sh under next. What? Otis was the first to put the pieces together. I get it. You already knew that this path was going to snap. Despite that, you have led us here. That means you were going to cross this bridge and drop all of us behind you. Blimey. 
what I'd say. There was something iffy about this plan. Oi, is, it, is this that loony captain's orders? She said sacrifice necessary. Can't go forward unless someone falls. I wanted to escape. I wanted to escape the, with Pequod crew. And we're just to accept... We're just acceptable losses of the way, huh? Just like that. Yes. Then... Why did you change your mind? Want to know now. Know what? My way, my path. Uh, who? Okay. Of course we're fighting this thing. We're fighting all the egos. <laughs> the center ego thing from above. Okay. Who are you trying to hit? You saw the third one, but it's unopposed. So what? I, I, excuse? I am confuzzled. Seventy-five percent chance to grow. <laughs> the temptation is there, though. <laughs> Do I get? <laughs> To just try and take the candles with it. Cause I'm not sure if you'll get hit. This might be a little bit more of a recon one. This one seems much more gimmicky than the last. That I don't know what's happening because it's not technically attacking me. But I'm hoping you in the rain. Snuffing out your stupid candles. I think something got hit for stagger. That one's broken. That's it. Part broken. I don't get it. You are broken. You are part broken. Are the okay? Part broken on all of those. I'm gonna put one. Okay, they're staying at one. Eight sixty-three. Okay, now you're all attacking. Okay, let's do neutral, favored. I 
I'm so confused by the gimmick here. I mean, this is easier. Dominating. Okay, Pride, Gloom, Sloth, and Slash. I wish I brought Ryoshu into this friggin' fight. Sounds like we need Nico, and I know a perfect one to throw. on that same spot. This might be a stagger. Oh, the candle's healed. Back to this bullshit. Ye son! You did not get enough. Well, you're more than zero, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. Uh, inflict one attack down next turn. Heals SP for four other allies with the least SP. Well, Ye son would be one of them. So. Front ones done. Do one of the front ones. <sighs> Thanks, the purple is Roshi's best one. So, two of those two. Like, I'm pre trying to heal the SP before it actually. Sadly, it does no damage. This is so weird. And I was so close to a fucking stagger, too. At least on the main body. Maybe I hit, because it didn't do anything. Buy candle? Oh, it's lighting the candles! Damage? No. Not. Eh, no. Uh. Sadly, only one of you. And their main weakness. Uh, the records inscribed with the burning quill are endless. Yet the prophet must write, because the future is also endless. Most advantage? Shit. Shit. No one has it! Ah, uh, Done! 
You did it. Okay, they snuffed out the burning flames and looked into the records. The sinner could not understand a single word of it, but soon realized that reading it was unnecessary. Dante Lady merely accepted the records as they naturally came to them. The sinner felt as though it was something was constricting around their head, but their weapon arm felt empowered. One of its heads was glaring in their direction. Dante Lady loses 20 SP, gains 2 attack power up for the encounter. Plus 3 fragile for the encounter. Reduce HP of the candle with the most HP to 1. They were already at one. Dominating. Favored. Dominating. That's the one where I probably need an ego, right? Nope, dominating. Last one is an ego. gloom either so you know what i'll do this one Kaza! you're at 160. somehow this is going better than i expected felt very gimmicky. Ooh! Dead with the ego. Perfect. Thank you, Lou. And Yisong. And Roja. Because Roja had the only ego that was technically his weakness. He got bit trying to save Pit. The whale bit him when he tried to save Pit. He... Shit. Why'd that oil barrel have to fall on our oarsmen? None of it made sense from the start. Making that kid row as a replacement. <laughs> Captain, please tell Pip, is Stump going to die? What did I say? As long as you are my crew, none of you shall die without my explicit permission. And I don't remember giving any of you permission to die just yet. But I... What will happen to... The Pequod is on the brink of reaching the pallid whale of hatred. All we need is a good compass that'll lead us to it. This mermaid before us will serve that role better than anything. But, Captain, I, I am, am not a mermaid. Whatever that whale devoured will eventually turn into a pallid whale. You must know that. Incinerate this mermaid with a large cistern down by the holes. Its instincts will drive it toward the whale of hatred. Incarcerate, not incinerate. This is almost, actually is, darker than even Ahab's in the book. <laughs> This is straight up, like, I'm going, this person's going to turn into a tool that I will now use to hunt what I'm looking for. And yeah, there were tools and people were made, who made tools, like there was a blacksmith and a carpenter to some degree, and who made a uh, quick quick coffin. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. It's so dark, though. Captain. Captain, please, no. Starbuck. Send down a skiff. What? Now? I. A few moments later, I heard a splash of water. All hands of the ship emerged from their stations and gathered around on Ahab. And Ahab thundered. Oh. 
I hear him. Listen well for a stub who speaks. Heed his voice. What the hell is she? All of you, listen well. The voice of the great sailor stub echoes from across the lake. The great sailor sub who so willingly threw his life in danger for the hunt of the whale. I... The great? In our urgency, we had no time to bring him back aboard. Yet he lives. He did not die. Though he is overboard, floating on the lake, ink after his fateful battle, he will soon find safety aboard the skiff I have lowered for him. He shouts. Oh yes, he bellows for our victory, and he bellows that we must go on. Sail forth to victory. What kind of insanity is this? We sail forth. We quick. This voyage will soon meet its victorious end. Then I shall I'll sail to the nearest port. And there he shall await us. The great stub, with a profound smile, he shall greet us. He will be rightfully rewarded. Rightly rewarded, and of course, we will all share tales of this voyage over many sleepless nights. With a profound smile, I... And there you shall all be as well. We will buy rounds upon rounds of drinks for everyone in the tavern in Stubb's name. Once this voyage is over, everything will come to be. Once this voyage is over... Once this... Is this braid marshing? Once this voyage is over... The whale of hatred is finally in our sights. You'll kill it, right, Captain? Let us answer his calling. We will kill the whale of hatred. We will kill the pallid whale. All aboard, men. All aboard for the hunt. For the evil. All aboard this voyage to hunt. Hunt the font of all evils of the world, of the city. The hateful evil that pushes you all to the brink of death. All of your struggles, all of your injustices, all of your pains and losses, the very evil sprang forth from that very whale. So we will kill it. We'll kill it and watch as the new dawn breaks upon the world that has been mended. I shout, bellow. I, Captain. I-I-I <laughs> can't tell if it's sad or happy for Pip. Goodbye, Stub. Let's meet again, again and again. I... Yeah, it'll be over when we kill the pallid whale. When we kill the whale of all evils. This feels like brainwashing! <laughs> Putting everything on the whale where... Okay, here's the thing. I can believe that Ahab believes the pallid whale to be the evil of all evils. For her. <laughs> Shit. I feel like it... Okay, so I didn't skip audio. So, all along, we've not only been trapped inside the whale, but also in her palms all along. Makes sense. Okay, after dealing damage to enemies using the Lust or Burn Effect skill, inflict 3 burn on the targets. If the enemy has 20 plus burn at the start of the turn, double their current burn. Hoi! I have screw an Ishmael shattered from the top of my mind, kill the pellet whale, and all should be over. This has to be the artery Ahab was talking about. Once we cut this thing open, our path to the center of the heart will open. Cut open the artery. It's much tougher than I expected. The artery appeared much sturdier than we had initially assumed. 
but if we lay too much here, we won't be able to arrive at the rendezvous area in time. You're the highest and you're pride. Give me what I'm looking for. Ooh. Even without the flip. Okay, Hung Lu slowed their breathing and steadied their poise. Oof. Before striking the artery, slicing it open. Sanguine fluid gusted a very terrifying rate. As blood flow from the opening begins to slow, the path begins to open. Let's make our way to the heart. All allies healed for 10 SP. Ooh, glad that wasn't like a multi thing like the other one. Uh, okay, we're about to hit stairs. Shit, how long is this? Oh, only an hour and a half. Actually, not as long as... Okay. Is that a wooden crate? Sarah's found a haphazardly thrown pile of crates. It can't be... It can be extrapolated from their appearances that they were to be used as supply crates. Some boxes has the Twin Hooks pirate logo drawn on, on them. Some of them has the Before Team logo. The male must have swallowed these crates too. Tis wise to procure some of them as our provisions. Right, we don't know what'll happen once we get to our get to the heart. Should we take some of them just in case? Uh, it might give another ego, so I lean rummage. We stop out before a crate with a Twin Hook Pirate logo on it. The crate appears to be locked. It's all rusted. I don't think we can even try and pick the lock. Then we smash it open. The box itself looks pretty flimsy. We were smashing its contents as well. Uh, you should have advantage. Hang Lu observed the crate closely and then took a step back and then with a controlled strike smashed only the lid of the crate. We found inside a box was a rusted hook covered in blood and a white membrane. It was probably used to kill mermaids. I don't know what it was, what use this could possibly have, but it might come in useful. Should we check other boxes too? Rusted hook burned. Proceed. Crate has the LCB logo on it. This one looks sturdy enough. We probably can't smash it open. Crates have been sealed by an intricate locking mechanism. That'll be able to smash this open. Wait, I think I remember something. Maybe a sinner who uses an LCB identity in the past may know something about this. I don't even have an LCB, Don Quixote. I have Ryoshu's, but she also doesn't have the pride advantage, so... Don Quixote fiddled with the lock and opens the crate. I see, and this crate was a magazine for a firearm. Indeed, what we found inside the crate was a magazine full of bullets. We can definitely find good use for this. If there are any more useful boxes around, we decide to move on to the next area. Uh, standard issued mag. Which will be helpful for Heath. Gain one poise when the skill's first coin head hits against the enemy with bleed. <sighs> Identities with ammo start encounters with plus three max ammo. <laughs> Wish I had that like a few times back, but sure. Whew. Feels very close to an end. Okay, wait. If... The big abnormality boss... The first one was the clam for Hong Lu and Ryoshu's... Ego drops. The second was for Faust and Sinclair's egos from the battle pass. 
Does that mean this next one's going to be Ryoshu's and Ishmael's ego abnormality connection? Which I thought would, would have just been the mermaids, because the mermaids have seriously looked like it, but... Oh, I think we're about to actually see it. Uh, finally, once this is over, we can get out of here. I guess Ahab's not here yet. Is that an abnormality? Something twists before us, an entity skewered by numerous fore fluorescent bars. Get out of my way. Watch out, it's charging! Perhaps it felt threatened when Ishmael grabbed her harpoon, it leapt out of the lake and began rushing toward us. Lake? Why'd you say lake? Cause there's like a- Yeah, that's what it is. Hi, sir. Struggling. Don't like that. Favored. 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 Unopposed. Don't like that. Unopposed. Don't like that. Um, you're, you're, wait, you're hitting Heath, but not hitting Heath. I don't like this. That means I can't block it with getting a win. Everyone is unopposed. Fuck. Okay, fine. Oh, is it gonna throw those fluorescents out? What? The fuck? Something sways in the rolling waves. Are we near water? Hopeless, 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 fuck! Struggling, hopeless, hopeless. Gamble on a struggling? Neutral? Why are you doing this again? You want to hit Heath, but also you're not letting me... Okay, these two... Don't? <laughs> Dominating. Okay, I can block one. <laughs> That one's struggling. That one's neutral. You know what? Since I don't think I'm gonna be able to... Wait. Hopeless. 25% chance. Hopeless. What is this one? Hopeless. What if it's the main one? Also hopeless. Oh, even with the fucking ego. How about defend? Shit, not enough to break it. Uh, 
where did that float some float from? From where and how did it end up here? After so many years, even with that float, some may no longer recall from whence it came. As long as it can be used to stop that abnormality's attacks. Uh, come on! Thank you, Don! This is possible because the other sinners tried their best to draw the abnormality's attention. Don Quixote grabbed onto the float, some tried to move it out of the way before slamming their weapon down upon it. This ended up leaving several sharp edges on the floatsome. If something were to charge into the floatsome, it would be impaled upon unable to progress further. Shit! Break it. Break it before it can have it. you to go there you're not going to but John and the float soaps Maybe let it take. Maybe. Help us. Maybe. Oh no, because it smacks the float some into... What the fuck is happening? I'm gonna say one rate. See what happens. Nothing good. Nothing good. Go wild. Thanks, Otis. Oh, wait, no, that's sun showers. Oh. Everyone. <laughs> Just everyone. I kind of gave up on this one. 
Yeah, we're resetting. Number Lou looks so funny because it keeps the fucking hair. <laughs> Who died? I can't tell. Uh, okay, I know you, Song Keith. Hong Lu. Okay, Ishii's Sire, Roger's Sire, Don's dead. Neutral. Favored. Hopeless. Neutral. Ingo! We're just somehow neutral. Yeah, failing your ego is so much worse. <laughs> well, I think I take just the full something. Now there's a body. Hong Lu's about to be a body. Ishii's dead. It has like 123 health too. Oh, so you're all doing much better than I expected. Hey, you, don't tell me you've just been twiddling your thumbs watching us fight. I would have just gotten in your way. It appears that Ahab's lost most of her crew on her way here. Rest of crew not here. Only five now. Why? You dare question me now? Eh? Your present company must have rubbed off on you. I have enough men left. The rest were disposable. They must have left you in quite the impression. Left quite the impression, Quick Quick. Say it. Why? Before I do, Quick Quick. Where's your greeting for your captain, for your surviving compatriots? Especially when the heart presents itself before us. We are this close to killing the whale. 
Oh, Pip's not dead. Yeah. Pip hates mermaids. Want to now want them out of here. But the pail keeps trying to eat Pip. This, uh, it won't come off. The valification is progressing the closer we get to the heart. It's starting to get rather bothersome. The palpification effects was intensifying indeed. But you, all of you, are somehow completely unaffected. And yet this ticking sound... It's been getting on my nerves. Ahab strode toward me. Tell me, what will I find in your clock head? Ahab looks into my head. And I, in turn, raise my head to return the gaze. This is... Ahab's journey through the pancreas right plays right before my eyes. Captain, you said you won't let me be a mermaid. Well, then, this was not the right method indeed. Huh? No. Don't cut that. Everyone behind you will. Captain, that was Pip. Pip cut the vein. Wonderful. Imagine how overjoyed Stub would be were he here. Need to witness your exploits. Think he's watching over us, Pip? Can we kill the hateful whale? Captain? What did you just... Oh, I kicked the loud in there. Looks like that wasn't going... Looks like that wasn't the right path. We dare beg for your life? Captain, that's... that's not what... And I... With every moment, every second we waste, the end of days grows near. Every beating of that pallid whale's heart is a bell tolling for the end of the world. We can stop the apocalypse with our own two hands, yet you kneel here and dare to grovel for your life? You mean to make your crew sacrifice to have been for not unbelievable? Captain, I can die. For this cause, I will. Nay, not death. I have never and will never order my men to their deaths. No, but you'll just throw them to it. I send them to greatness, not death. Ugh. Uh, so they'll revive when I hit checkpoint, right? I don't remember. Ahab is be kind of also being set up right now to be the opposite of Dante. Because Dante continuously brings the sinners back from death. From being left behind. <laughs> for Dante. And has literally walked in front of a hit for a sinner. So, oh my god. Your head, what an odd power it has. Just like the peculiarities of each whale, Pequod crew sank right before heart because of you. It was a mistake to expect even a hint of surprise or shame from the captain when it was revealed that she'd sent her crew to the death to their deaths. Yes, you can say that. You may indeed claim that I have sacrificed my crew. But now, they must be wandering the whale's guts, transformed into mermaids. Lucky ones probably turned into sludge and acid. But why? I know this heart better than anything else in the world. I know it better than my own body. The pancreas we have journeyed through is an endless winding maze, and if our limbs were to be melted off, we'd have no means of recovering them as you do. I had to calculate the ideal path to the heart. Losses be damned. I see no injustice in committing my pursuit of practicality. I even encouraged and reminded them of their pride and greatness as they drew their last express. When it could not be helped, I made sure that they perished before fear overwhelmed them. My crew and I are one, bound by oath, the promise that we will hunt the pallid whale, whatever it takes. Are we not, Ishmael? Now, we shall. Sail to the heart. 
quite. Yet we need one last piece of the puzzle before we set sail. Ahab turns to face me again, glaring at me with her burning eyes. That shard of the bow. What are you? I, Captain Ahab, cannot be deceived. That thing your clot head is a piece of the golden ball, is it not? It is that golden thing that the counteracts the palification effects. Am I wrong in assuming that this is how you and your crew have remained untouched by its effects? Soon, our final battle for everything that we hold dear will commence. And for victory, I shall spare no quarter. No one knows what will happen here at the heart of the whale from which all evils of the city, the world, spout. And it is not patently clear that you are the one, only one inexperienced in combat. What if you were to perish? What fate shall befall your crew? What fate shall befall your crew should you meet a pathetic end without having destroyed the whale's heart? That's... Everyone here, including your crew and mine, will turn into mermaids within hours. So what the hell do you want me to do? Hand it over, that gold shard in your head. And I swear by my name that I will personally see to it that everyone trapped within this whale safely makes it to the world outside. Captain ain't wrong, you know. Huh? I guess that makes sense, some sense. What? Excuse? Uh, no. It doesn't. It takes but a single sacrifice to ensure that everyone survives, down to every single crew. I... I detest that. I shall not relinquish Manager Aspire's head to thee. Then what? Fail to destroy his heart and let us all be mermaids together? Is that what you wish for your tale to end? That's... My friends, is it... There are not something out there past this pallet whale's flesh that awaits your return? Laying your lives down just to save the life of some useless clock cannot possibly be your dream. You must have something that drives you, a desire, a goal, a mission that you must see to its end once you escape this whale. Captain Ahab cuts through our hearts, cracking them little by little and nests in there. Okay, all the sitters, your goal requires Dante, especially all you bitches who have yet to have a chapter. <laughs> even the sinners may have been moved by her speech, even for a brief moment. And that brief moment is all it takes for that thought to spread throughout the heart as water freezes between the cracks of a rock. This conversation is so stupid. I hate it. <laughs> this Ahab is full of shit. Why would this speech work at all after they've literally had her confess to throwing the rest of the crew away? Ishmael, go nuts. Stab her now. I don't care. <laughs> That's what she always... That's what she's always done, I'm sure. And all of a sudden... And when everything reaches that... Reaches a crescendo, it will shatter. Ishmael, her crew. This is what Ahab had done to them. Tell her what I'm about to say, Faust. Understood. You're not going to be responsible for the sinners. And no one knows what'll happen to the sinners if my head is crushed. I'm not going to let the doubts you cast chart hurt our futures. Because I am their manager. Let's go, Tate! Oh! Hmm. Predictable. Pleading for your life now, are you? Besides, I don't want to die. <laughs> Sacrifice, a gilded name given to death. Uh, so that it won't feel as hollow when it come when it claims us. I've seen the sinners die a thousand deaths, and I've shared that very same pain that killed them countless times. I felt the weight of their every death, so I can't bring myself to wrap them up in a pretty box labeled sacrifice. Instead, I endure endlessly. What gives our collective struggle significance, what gives our suffering meaning, is us. That we share the weight and convey our own meaning, meanings to our battles. 
that is a good point that we constantly see the sinners and it hasn't been as visceral as it was in like the early chapters when it was first done but Dante is always feeling the pain that they experience so Dante is experiencing that pain throughout all of the deaths and the rewinds and so oh, I just I love it so much Dante just saying fuck you to Ahab even if he can't directly say fuck you to Ahab so that everyone can reach for their own dreams that's why the struggle is no sacrifice I won't seek death willingly Ahab you really haven't changed no you've become even more revolting I struggled I grasped Yet again, you had us in the palm of your hands. Commandeering our ship, turning me into one of your crew again? Silence! Shut up! This is a moment of paramount importance. The path to the heart opened as Ahab finished her words. That looks like the golden ball.